So I have this mechanic in the game that we're making where I can basically pull any interactable object. But in order to pull any object, I need to use a blueprint interface because it could be, well, any object. I need to get a location of that object in real time to pass into this Niagara system. So the quick tutorial I want to do this episode is how do you get data from an object that's implementing an interface? So first, I'm going to walk you through the existing setup that I have in the game that we're making. And then we're going to do it for that door example. I keep going back to every single tutorial. So I've got a blueprint interface here, BI player character, and this is the function. And so basically, anytime you need to get information from an existing object that's implementing the interface, you need to pass that through the interface as an output. So think of it this way. If you're pushing information, to the object that's implementing the interface, then you use an input. And if you're pulling information from that object back to the original source that's calling that implemented interface, then you want to use outputs. So in this example, I'm using mesh world location. Basically, I'm passing the location of that static mesh back to whatever actor is, well, calling this interface function. So on my interactable static mesh here, I have our mesh world location function. And this is all it's doing. It's getting the location of a mesh and it's passing that in. And then my staff here is what's actually pulling that object. So I have a pure function on the staff that's get captured object location. And it takes our captured object, which I get a reference to. And then from that reference of that captured object, I'm getting that reference from a line trace. But that's all stuff that we've done previously in the series. So I won't spend time on that. But once you get a reference to the object, then you're implementing the interface and you're getting that output and you're returning that world location. Now, I thought about showing you how this interacts with the entire system, but uh, I decided against that. So what we're going to do for the rest of this episode is build on the episode titled Casting versus Blueprint Interfaces with interactive door examples. So if you want to follow this from scratch with the door of your own, you could check out that episode. I'm using a door here that was from a free for the month pack, but it's no longer free. So just pick up any door that you want and you can follow along with that episode and build off of what we're doing here. But what we're doing here is what I want to do is instead of our character just running into the door and it opening automatically, what I want to do is I want the character to be able to check to see, okay, how massive is this door? And is our puny little character here strong enough to actually open the door? So in order to do that, we need to get a piece of information back from the door. And I don't want to cast. We're going to do everything with interfaces. We need to get a piece of information back from the door, which is how massive, how heavy, what's the size of that door? So we run up to it. Nope, can't get in. But if I hit O, like an interactive button, in your face interface, if I'm strong enough, boom, door opens. And the beauty of this system with interfaces is we don't need any direct references and really any interactive character or entity can interact with any other character or entity. And there are no restrictions. So if anything, like an animal is strong enough to open the door, boom, can do it. All right, so starting off of that episode, and by the way, I'm gonna pin a link directly in the comments below and you can get to that episode. But one thing that we did that I actually want to rename this. So we're going to have two interfaces that we're using. I want to rename the one that we did that episode from BPI interactive entity to a BPI interacting entity, because really it's the character or a creature or a thing that's doing the interacting. It's like the subject object duality. And then I'm going to create a new interface, a brand new interface. So this is under blueprint and then blueprint interface. And the second one's going to be titled BPI interactive entity. So think of it this way. So we got one interface that's for everything that's doing the interacting. And we got one interface for any object that's being manipulated. And so we're going to start by going into that new interactive entity blueprint interface. And for this new function, I'm going to title it get mesh size. And what I'm going to do is in the output. So this is our interface output. We are going to return with this interface our mesh size. Like how big is that entity? And this is going to be a float and compile and save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my door blueprint. And this is what we set up before. And over in class settings here, I am going to implement an interface. So we're going to go to add and then we're going to look for BPI interactive entity. So I have my door size variable here. And what I'm gonna do with this is if I go under interfaces, the get mesh size. So you heard me say earlier that anytime you're getting data from an interface, like anytime it's an output, it's just a function. And so you're not going to be able to implement the event here. You just double click into it. And what we have to do is take our door size. Now this is a float variable I created separately, but you could just create a float variable. 
and I define that as 100 for this particular door, but you could define that any way you like, and we're gonna pass that into mesh size here. And so what we're doing is that anytime this interface is called from any other actor, we can get, well, in this case, we can get the door size and return that. So compile and save this. And so now we gotta go into whatever actor is doing the interacting. So if it's your third person character, we can go into that blueprint. So that's our third person blueprints and that guy. And so what I'm gonna do is if you have a keyboard shortcut for interacting with your environment, with the world, you could use that. But I'm just gonna set up keyboard O for open. It's a Wizard of Oz reference, that's before your time. Okay, so keyboard O, what we need is we need to get what we're currently interacting with. So I'm gonna define that as a new variable on our third person character. I think this is universally useful. You know, whenever your character is interacting with the world, you want a variable that's capturing what that character is currently interacting with. So I'm just gonna call it currently interacting with, and we're gonna make this an actor because it could be all sorts of things that uh, the character is interacting with. But what we're gonna do is get a reference to that currently interacting with, and by the way, we haven't set this yet, so we don't know what we're currently interacting with, but we'll do that shortly. And But whatever we're currently interacting with, what we wanna do is we wanna get the mesh size. We wanna get how large that thing is that we're interacting. And then here from the mesh size, we wanna set some sort of threshold. So is it less than whatever the threshold is? So let's say your character has a strength of 200. So you could promote this to a variable and this would be your character's strength. And that's what you're comparing to to see, okay, is there strength sufficient to move this mesh size? And I'm just setting this arbitrarily for the sake of this demonstration, but we're gonna branch, connect this up here. And so if the mesh size is lower than the character's strength, then let's just for now, just for testing, we'll do a print string and we'll say this door is no match for my great strength. If I could spell and I'll copy and paste print string down here to false. And we'll say, let's say this door is massive, impossible to open. So now we actually have to define what we're currently interacting with. We have to do this. And so the way I'm gonna do that is we go back to our doorway BP, back to the event graph. And I only wanna be able to do that, or I only wanna do that when I'm actually close to the object that I'm interacting with. So we're gonna leverage our on component begin overlap here that we set up the previous episode. And instead of on begin overlap actually opening the door, we're not gonna do that. So. I'm gonna take all this, I'm gonna collapse it to a function. We're gonna have something else opening the door. That's gonna be the O, uh, but we're gonna do that in a few minutes. So collapsed function, and I'll name this function door open. And we'll move this down here because we're gonna use that shortly. So we gotta do something here to tell our character that on begin overlap of the door, okay, this is the interactive entity. And so the way I'm gonna do that is back to our original interface that we created in that previous episode. I told you we'd have to do that previous episode. So that original BPI, we gotta browse to it and we can open this one, the interacting entity. And we've got a new function here that's blank. I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna name it set interactive entity. And all this is going to do, it's gonna have a single input. And this is going to be the interactive entity, what we are interacting with. And that's going to be an actor here, object reference. Compile and save that. And we already implemented this interface in that previous episode on our third person character. And so under interfaces here, so you don't have to go to class settings again because you already implemented the interface, but you have to implement this event. So any new function under the interface you implement as an event, if it's only inputs and you implement it as a function or you actually go into the function if it's outputs. All right, so you right click on this implement event. So when this is called, the interactive entity is going to get set, and that's this currently interacting with. So all we're gonna do is set this, and that's gonna set this variable that's then used up here. And so we need to set this on door overlap. So back to doorway BP. So if our actor who's overlapping the door does implement this interface, the BPI interacting interface, if that is true, then what we wanna do is from that actor, we wanna call that function that we just set up. So the set interactive entity. And what entity is our interactive entity in this case? Well, it's this entity itself. It's the doorway in this case. So you could do this logic on any interactive entity. It doesn't have to be a doorway, but in this case, well, I'm just 
get a reference to self. But again, it's only going to do this if the actor that's overlapping, like if a bird flies into the door, as long as it doesn't implement the BPI interacting interface, then this isn't going to happen and nothing's going to happen when the bird flies into the space. So compile and save this. So I think we're ready to test this. So let's give this a go. What should happen if you set this to 100 and then you set the threshold to 200 is on overlap, nothing should happen. But then on O, it should print something. This door is no match for my great strength. Okay, so that's good. But let's actually up the total, what, size of the door? Or let's just up the door size variable here to 400. So this 400 now is going to be greater than that threshold that we set here on our third person character. So because it's greater than that threshold, it should not print. Well, it should print something different when I hit O. This door is massive, impossible to open. Yes, so let me just retrace the logic so that you've got it. And you could skip over this part if it's already working for you. So the first thing that happens is in our doorway BP, on component begin overlap, it first checks, okay, the actor that's doing the overlapping, so that's our character, does it implement this interface? If so, it sets for that character, it sets for this what our interactive entity is. And the interactive entity is the door. It's the door itself. And that's being set right here. So once this is set, then this is valid. And in fact, what I should probably do here, just to do this properly, is make an is valid check. Because if there's nothing that you're currently interacting with, then it's not going to be valid and it shouldn't do anything. And although I'm not going to do it this episode, you probably want to do the same thing when you leave the doorway. You actually want to unset the interactive entity. You want to clear it. Okay, but the very last thing, let's actually open the door if I'm strong enough to open it. So let's get rid of these print strings and we'll actually open the door. But since we're doing this entirely without casting, we need one more interface function. So back to BPI interactive entity. And we're going to do a new function here. And it's going to be titled open entity or open sesame no entity and no variables on this so all this is doing is we're going to trigger this if the character is strong enough to open the item could be a treasure chest could be a door could be anything and that's the power of interface so let's go back over to our doorway bp and let's implement that new event so open entity implement event and this is going to be hooked up to here our door open function and save this and the very last thing back over to third person character and if this is true that this door is no map stop saying that with my weird voice delete the print string and instead what we're going to do is get a reference to our currently interacting with and we are going to open entity connect up the true compile and save let's set our doorway bp let's set the door size below 200 i mean you could do it with 400 first but i'm just going to go back to 100 so that it should open compile and save that and try it one more time so i walk into the door doesn't open but then i use my great strength for great justice take off every zig and the door opens and there we go and we'll do a negative test real quick just make sure that if we set the door size something much larger that it does not open. Let's give it a whirl. And we run into it and oh, and this door is massive, impossible to open. And that's how you pass data back from an interface back to the entity, the character, the creature, really anything that is interacting with that entity. And so I hope this was useful. I know interfaces can be kind of confusing. So I figured doing a second episode on this might be helpful. And I'll see you in the next one.